Forgive me, gamers, for I have sinned. Today I'd like to confess the crime of not playing the game properly. Greetings, I'm Lee, your humble game master, and this is another confessions video. This time a player confession rather than a game master confession. I don't play the game properly. What does that mean? How do you properly play a role-playing game? The only way to win a role-playing game is to have fun. Okay, easy enough. But I don't play the game properly, at least according to some. You see, I do things that are detrimental to my character. I make mistakes willingly. I deliberately walk into dangerous situations. I deliberately enter situations and go uh, that are way over my head. To many, this is not playing the game properly. But Throughout the years, I've played a lot of games, I've run a lot of games, I've, I've played a lot of video games, read a lot of books, seen a lot of movies. And the thing that I've taken from that, especially movies and books, is the best stories come about when the character's in a bad situation. When things don't go in their favour and when they make mistakes. I love characters who make mistakes. I don't like the guy who's in jail for a crime they didn't commit. I like the character who's in jail for a crime they did commit, and now they've got to come to terms with that. That's interesting to me. And as I play games, I want to explore those ideas. So, I want to play characters who make suboptimal decisions. As a player, I don't want to make, pick the best combination of stats for things. I want to make my character one that has to struggle with things. They can be a bit of an underdog, or they can be good at some things, but at the expense of something else, but actually play up their weakness like it means something. If I'm Now, why is this a sin to confess? Um, I imagine a lot of people, especially people who play uh, storyteller games like World of Darkness, um, or, or any game where there's a, a flaw system especially, often will do this. The, the problem with it, sort of is is that I play a lot of different games and trying to bring my gaming experience from one game to another game can sometimes create this problem. If I play Dungeons and Dragons with some people it's fine. In fact they're probably all doing the same thing. Or it's not obtrusive enough uh, to the game to make it a problem. To other people though if I'm playing my my rogue who has a phobia of rats or if I'm playing my my wizard who due to some trauma is quite callous and cold and you know, says what's on their mind rather than sugarcoating their words that's a problem you're not playing the game properly you know it's not the rogue's job to be afraid of, of rats it's the rogue's job to go forward with a 10-foot pole and find the traps and it's kind of hard to disagree with that when you read through some role-playing books where encounters are balanced towards the party acting perfectly in concert together tactically and soundly you can't play a wild card you can't play the person who doesn't pull the line you know, you've got to you've got to be like a swap team you've got to kick in a dungeon door make sure everybody's positioned in a uh, in the right way, make sure the right spells are up, spend five turns buffing your wizards and your clerics to make sure they're doing the right thing, make sure you've got the exact equipment. I want to play the guy who kicks the door in and storms ahead. Or I want to play the guy who holds back and, and waits because you don't know what's going to happen. I want to play a character who will do characterful things in those situations. Not always to the detriment of the party, um, you know, I don't want to be that kind of asshole, but not always to the benefit either. Tactical simulation has its place, but I ultimately role play to role play. Now, I can be talked round, of course, in a dungeon crawl, in a modern day vampire game where we have to storm the lair of a rival vampire. If we talk about things, if our characters sit down, and they realise they're not all well-oiled parts of a the machine, they're people with people problems, and they go, this is how we're going to have to deal with this situation. And we go through that, 
and part of our planning is in character overcoming those those weaknesses that we have or dealing with them so that we can deal with a better problem that's fine in a dungeon crawling game um, it's actually been quite fun to have a character who is the leader of the group uh, and I'm playing a character who might be a bit more cowardly or a bit more um, on, on the one hand or a bit um, overly uh, confident on the other hand it's good to have the, the leader character or a character who wants to be a leader be able to go you know, we need you now you're you know we're gonna look after you you're a you're our wizard here we need you in this situation this is what I want you to do and, and reassure you. Or if I'm playing the, the barbarian, to use a stereotype, who just wants to kick the door in and kill goblins, having that leader go, there'll be a time for that, but I need you now to trust me. And actually role-play those leadership qualities. I, I like that. So, yes, I don't play the game properly by some definitions, but I at least with the people I role-play with regularly... It's because I want to get something out of them in the game that these people want to provide. Um, where it's a problem, of course, is when people don't know me or when people come to the game from another group without that assumption. Uh, and it is the tactical game where you can't make one mistake and you've got to, to do what you've got to do. And, and if somebody's not doing it, they're not pulling their weight. And that's a shame because... If there was a right way of doing everything and you had to follow that right way, all the characters would be the same. You know, Every rogue would be the same. Every street samurai would be the same. There'd be no reason to diversify the characters because there's you've got to do it the right way. What did you take that feat for? What did you take that skill for? You know, That's not how you win, win the game. And it's, it's a shame. But it is a confession because I realise to many people... Not playing the game properly is a sin. Just watch videos. Just look online. Look at the rants you see on message boards. I can't believe you're playing this character. You're playing it wrong. Oh, how can you build a rogue without these abilities? This is the proper way of building a rogue. I once played in a D20 Star Wars game years ago now. Me and a friend turned up to a, a group. Um, we're, we're kind of looking for a group because uh, we didn't really have one um, at the time. We were quite young and this is us getting into role playing. But I had a copy of the book and we made some characters. And we both played scoundrels. My friend played a starship um, pilot uh, or like a, a smuggler type of pilot. Um, kind of Han Solo-like. Um, and I played his Twi'lek sort of second-hand man, uh, essentially. And we were we were scoundrels. We'd get in over our head. Like Miguel or Tulio from Road to El Dorado. All those kind of people. The people who are frequently over their head. But you know when, when the, the chips are down... They will, they will uh, come up top for you. You know, they will. They're, they're loyal. I would tell we play this kind of. We have a little bit of dialogue between each other. The 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 premise of us being on this planet, uh, Tatooine, is that we've lost our starship, our, our our smuggling ship. Sorry, um, somebody's stolen it from us. So we need to figure out who. And we've we've got to do a little bit of freelance adventuring to earn enough credits to uh, start our inquiries. And we, we meet up with the other players, and there's one other guy who's really into his role-playing. He's playing a Jedi consular, and he's quite involved, and we have some fun role-playing him. And partway through the game, one of the guys there, this, this large gentleman, playing a Gamorrean warrior, he stops the game and looks at us and goes, you guys aren't playing this properly. Oh, you don't know how to make characters at all, do you? I think we make rather good characters. No, 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 this is what you need to do. Get a Gamoran, all right? They're in this book here. Put all your points into strength and constitution. Don't worry about charisma or smarts or anything like that. Take a vibro axe, right? You need a vibro axe to make this work. Look at this character sheet. This is a character. Look how much damage I do. We never went back to that game, um, but we met we met the other guy who was playing the Jedi Consular didn't either, but through him we met other people and we ended up going into a gaming group where you could make the wrong characters and have fun. But that's where this idea sort of originally came from. You're making the wrong character. Now, this is a confession video. So, how do I absolve myself of the sin of not playing the game properly? Firstly, what is the game about? If the game is about special tactics, if the game is about 
being a hyper competent military minded precision individual games like Shadowrun for example are built around the idea that you're a professional make a character that suits that world have flaws but ones that don't get in the way of the fact that you're a professional in a dungeon crawling game it's a bit difficult because dungeon crawling isn't really a job when you go to a fantasy game it could mean anything it means different things to different people. To some people it is going from cellar to cellar killing rats and goblins. To other people it's an epic sweeping Lord of the Rings style game. Understand what the game is about. And because you're not going to have fun if you're playing a character who's not playing properly in a game where everybody else is. Because you'll probably get killed in five seconds. Um, which, which isn't fun. It might not be the game for me. You know, if I turn up and somebody says, do you want to play some D&D? &D? And I go, yeah, sure. What sort of game are you playing? Well, we're going to go into the uh, the Underdark and we're going to kill a bunch of Grimlocks. Um, get their loot and, and blah, blah, blah. I might sit this one out, guys. You know, have fun. Um, nothing wrong with that. If a game's not for you, don't play it. But say, well, I like the Underdark. I like the social side of it. You know, the, the, the drow politics and the... The Durgar and the Sverf Neblin and, and how they interact with each other. Can I play a character who can get involved with that? And if the GM goes, oh, yeah, that's the kind of thing I want to do. You know, there's going to be monster fighting. Don't get me wrong. It's D&D. It's &D. But yeah, I want to do some role playing with it as well. Awesome. Well, the GM might go, I don't really want to do that sort of thing. I want it to kind of be a, a, like a, a video game. Or I kind of want it just to be, you know, having a bit of fun with some minis on the table. That's fine. Might not be the game for you. But be honest. Um... My, my absolution for the sin is to not change who I am, but just be clear on what I want to do and what the GM and the other players want to do. Find games that suit your sensibilities, because if everybody's playing wrong, then nobody is. Well, that's my confession video. Do you play role-playing games wrong? Or do you play them the right way, whatever that means? Do you agree or disagree with me? Um, uh, or is there no forgiveness for playing video... Uh, video games Freudian slip for playing role-playing games the way I do should gamers like me not play role-playing games should they do fancy schmancy story games and amdram I'd love to hear your opinions and until next time have a great